Did you know that just by asking a different question could take you from just being one of the masses to being one of the most famous people in American history? In 1919, this was just after World War I, there was a hotelier named Raymond Ortag. And he was an aviation enthusiast, and he wanted to see if he couldn't spur on aviation. At the time, it was just airplanes that could go maybe 100, 200 miles that mainly just fought in the war. He wanted to turn aviation into an international concern. And so he offered up an, the Ortag Prize. It was $25,000 for the first plane that could fly nonstop from New York to Paris, 3,600 miles. Now, when he offered up the prize in 1920, nobody thought it was possible. I mean, the war had just made the, world, the world's best airplanes, and they could only go a couple hundred miles. But as the 20s rolled on and technology got a little better, everybody started thinking it was possible. They all started asking the same great questions that all aviators and airplane manufacturers did. They thought about it. They said, OK, I've got to go 3,600 miles. That's going to take a crew of two, probably 30 to 40 hours. So do I put the two crew members next to one another or behind another? If I've got two crew, I've got to have enough fuel to go that, that whole way. Am I going to need an extra long wingspan? Am I going to need two engines? Or maybe three. Should I do a biplane or a monoplane? They asked about the weather. When should I leave? In the summer or in the fall? What route should I take? Everyone was asking the same great question that all experts would ask. The same great questions that we ask in our business. And around 1925, people started taking the runway in New York. Some of them never took off. Some crashed right after takeoff. And some just got lost. Whether your airplane was broke, you were injured, or you died, people were failing at this. No one could figure out a solution to go nonstop from New York to Paris. Until 1926, when a sort of a cowboy of an aviation pilot, his name was Charles, and he thought he was going to give this a go. And he started thinking about all the same questions that everybody else was thinking about, the same technical questions about the plane, about the route, about the weather. And then he stopped for a minute, and he asked one different question. Could I fly alone for 40 hours? Sure, I could do that. I don't need a co-pilot. And so he removed his co-pilot and replaced him with a fuel tank. And because he had less weight and more room for fuel, he could build a smaller single-engine plane. And in 1927, Charles Lindbergh took off from New York and landed nonstop in Paris and claimed the Ortag Prize. What was the key to his innovation? How was it that Charles Lindbergh was able to do this when no one else was? Was it some new technology, some new capability? No. All he did was ask that different question. Sometimes the innovative solution isn't complicated at all. If you ask those different questions, sometimes the solutions are as simple as just not putting a seat in your plane. The next time you're thinking about generating a new innovative solution, ask yourself. Ask yourself, who's my co-pilot? And do they need to fly with me? Think about how you can change the question and that you can become one of the greatest people in American history. Thank <laughs> you.